Morning, guys. Good morning, morning Tom. Tom uh, and Jack, <laughs> here we are August 24th, 1991, and uh, we're having the finals today uh, with the club tournament match play starting at 9 o'clock. Uh, but not just as a special day because of that, there's a big celebration today, isn't there? Right. Today is the 75th anniversary of the White Lake Golf Club. It started in 1916, uh, and uh, through some horrendous years in the Depression and so forth, it uh, was held together. And here we are now with uh, uh, lots of improvements going on all the time and a great membership. We're going to try to highlight some of those improvements as we go around the course today filming the uh, tournament. Uh, there are new bridges, there are new buildings. Uh, what are some of the other improvements that we've added? Well, uh, due to a, a great group of volunteer members here, uh, we put on a, an addition to the clubhouse. Uh, we built new toilet facilities out on the course. We built a mile and a half of new fences around the uh, course. Uh, we've got a practice area. We've got a beautiful uh, uh, maintenance area that's uh, probably better than the clubhouse. And uh, we're all very proud of all these fellows that have uh, lent a hand in doing that. Well, Tom, I guess it's about time to head out on the course. Okay, Frank, let's go. So, uh, just kind of... Frank, here we are uh, with Neil Manning, uh, getting ready to get started this morning. Frank, uh, what's going on? Neil, we got a big event today, 75 years of celebration, right? It's a big one. Big dance tonight. Big the dinner dance, dance and the 75th anniversary for White Lake Golf Club. We're very proud of that in our record. Certainly have a beautiful course. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, any uh, any hi historical highlights for you? Well, I I've over the years spent my lifetime. Of course, I'm from Chicago, but every summer of my life is up here, as my father was and my grandfather. Resorted here at White Lake. His cottage was built in the year 1900. This club was uh, started in 1915 and really was an offshoot of the old White Lake Yacht Club that was 1906 got a little bit dormant during the First World War, and that's when the golf club began to prosper. And uh, uh, several years ago, the Yacht Club got their building back, and uh, obviously it's a great uh, combination with the two here at the center of the league. Neil, can you tell us about some of the fellas that started out here in the early years with you, some of the names uh, that you kind of remember back with White Lake? Sure. Our, uh, our present greenkeeper, uh, Dale Augustine, his grandfather, Ernie Augustine, uh, helped to build the original nine holes here at White Lake, and then uh, he was the manager of the club here for some many years until he retired, and then his, uh, his son took over for a while. He died in an early age, and we now have Dale here doing a tremendous job. And, probably one reason that we have the greatest course in Western Michigan. You know, Neil, as you play around the course, you just notice the fantastic work that Dale does. It's just such a pleasure. The greens are always in beautiful shape, and it's just so much fun. You know, people just drive around the edge of the course and comment how beautiful it is. That's very true, and uh, we sure got to give uh, Dale a great deal of credit because uh, he's learned how to do this uh, uh, with a lot of experience from his father and his grandfather. Just does a tremendous job. We're pleased to have Dale here, obviously. You know, uh, Neil, other than uh, the Lundell boys, uh, Frank and Johnny, we've had a lot of excellent golfers out here. Can you think of some names of some past uh, champions? And... The, the fellow that held the course record for so many years was a man named George Hartman. He was uh, from Chicago. And of sure, course, I remember uh, George. He uh, vacationed over in Sylvan Beach for years. I, I can't exactly remember the figure, but I, it's something like 66, 65 at that time. Okay. And, uh, after we originally got our 18 holes. But George Hartman was very active here at the club, uh, was the president of the club for so many years. And uh, we have uh, uh, his son and daughter and uh, all of his grandchildren. And, that whole group very active here at the White Lake Golf Club still. Well, you know, today we have some finals going on again. We have some guys vying for the uh, 1991 uh, White Lake Golf Championship. Who are some of these fellows, Frank? Well, you know, the champ flight today is Bill uh, Benedict against Kevin O'Connell. Kevin beat uh, Dave Nelson in a pretty good match, I guess, 
Thursday night. I just heard that. I, I yeah. Somebody had told me that Dave had beaten Kevin, and, yeah. and I was surprised, that, but very happy to hear that Kevin... And, you know, speaking of generations of people, isn't it neat that <laughs> Kevin O'Connell, you know, uh, many generations of the O'Connell family, here Kevin is in our final match today in the Big Champ flight. Kevin's worked uh, here for, for me and for the club for the last three years, and uh, we just couldn't be more pleased with uh, he and his personality. Right. He'll be a great golfer. Yes. I think we could be seeing uh, Kevin playing some big time golf, Neil. He goes down to school in Texas, and that's where they seem to train him pretty good. His father's a great golfer, his whole family is. You his bet. Grandfather. Well, who else do we have in the tournament uh, today, Frank? Tom, uh, first flight is uh, Johnny Miller against. Oh, Dennis Kroll. Oh, yeah. Against Dennis Kroll. Now, okay. uh, Dennis Kroll also serves a, a, as an officer in the club. Is that correct? No, but he's been chairman of the uh, of the uh, tournament committee, tournament right? committee, okay. and the special events committee. He's done a great job this year yes. and a lot of hard work. Okay, we appreciate it. Well, Second good. flight is uh, Andy Hanishin against Jerry Jervis. Now Jerry's played in the club a number of years. Just uh, you, you always see Jerry out on the White Lake Golf Course. Yeah. He loves to play. He loves the game, and uh, his short game is going to be tough for Andy today. Andy hits it long, but Jerry's got a great short game. Uh, let's see, where are we? Second flight? Yeah. I believe that's Larry Larson. I'm sorry, third flight. Third. Larry third Larson flight. against Fred Loy. Well, that's great. And then we had, of course, Jack Gore that we interviewed earlier has made the finals this year, and Jack's quite thrilled. I don't, I'm not sure who Jack is going. Fourth flight, he's playing Lee Holly, I Lee believe. Lee Holly in the fourth flight. Lee Holly. Well, that'll be a great matchup. Well, yeah, Frank, fun. I think we better get out and see where the action is. Better get on that first tee, Tom. Good to see you in the finals. I want you as uh, my designated hitter for driving today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I bought a new driver yesterday. I got a, a W. Oh, one of those like Herman and... Uh, well, Adams, I don't know. Huh? So, yeah. You're going to grow so a beard. imitation. From Does this mean you're going to grow a beard and right. play in your pajamas? Right, uh -huh. right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I figure now, now they got a weapon. It's called the... Oh, it's called the weapon, right? It says the weapon right on the bottom of it. The now w. you're going to be terrible, huh? So I should be able to hit it further out of bounds. Uh, Frank... Uh, Charlie's conditioning camp. That must have been 20 years ago. Yeah, this is a replica. <laughs> This Frank, is all the original shirt. <laughs> Frank, I understand that uh, Jerry Jervis beat a very fine golfer to yeah. get into. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, can you tell us about that matchup? Just a very brief rundown. I was three up after 13. I lost 14 and 15. Actually, he won 14 and 15. <laughs> uh, we tied 16. He won 17. And on 18. <laughs> I knocked it out of bounds, and uh, he won 18. Well, <laughs> and that brings us to where we are today. That right, that brings us to where we are today. He and Andy Hanishin are going to battle it out for the championship in, in an incredibly talented flight, the second flight. We sure are. Certainly are. Well, good luck to both of you on the tee. We'll be getting a shot of that first tee shot. So enjoy yourself and just have fun. I'll try to look good. Shake hands before Thanks you get started. Much, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You guys are getting ready in the practice tee. Black passing him with a long putter. Johnny Miller. Bill Benedict going for championship. Larry Larson, Denny Kroll.
Good one. Good one. Beautiful money. It track. really is. It really is. About that rascal alongside of you, though. I don't know. When the tournament's around, he always happens to sit and seem he's, to be he's here. He's always surviving. <laughs> right. Now, what flight is this, Frank? This is the third flight. Mine was too Larry much looks much like he won the yeah, coin yeah. toss. And, you know, you see Larry out here a lot. He loves the game of golf. Push that one off to the side a little bit. That was a nice long hit. I think Larry won't have too much trouble with it. Uh, did he get into trouble down along the tree line? Yeah, he's down there along the tree line between one and nine. Kevin's going to play Bill Fred Lloyd. Boy, talk about a man of many talents. Not only is he a heck of a golfer, but he's into all the, uh, the woodworking now and carving the horns of animals that he's, he's hunted. Boy, they're following each other, Tom. It seems to be a common occurrence here this morning. We've seen a lot of guys go off in that direction. There he is. Andy Hannish and on the tee now. Here is a long ball hitter, Frank. My guess is you're going to see that ball draw right up over the hill down there, just out into the sunshine. He's excited. I can see Well, he hit a long one. It's drawing, but it's in the rough. Did he stay up there along yeah, the right-hand side gonna, again? He's going to be—he's going to be close to uh, being out of bounds, actually. On the left, it really hooked and ran. Okay. And Jerry Jervis. Jerry hits one right down the middle. You know, it's rare you see Jerry miss that fairway. Yeah, there it is. Perfect shot. How are you doing, Frank? Good, Mike. Third, third Saturday. 20, 21st? Something like that, yeah. Whatever that Saturday is. Third time. No, I got it all. I'm ready for it. Good point. 99 players all along here. Yeah, right. Cut it down. So. Okay. So I'm gonna try to get them out of here a little quicker. We play three so That's we good. play fast. And I'm trying to get a lot of juniors together. Brad Tate said he'd help yeah. starters and yeah. keep people moving up and that stuff. Let's do it. Okay, good go. I'll, I'll keep in touch with you. All right. Would you take a hundred? That's good enough. How about getting over there and shaking hands with your grandson here, Johnny? Oh, well, I can do that. <laughs> Walking down the fairway. He wants me to you shake oh, hands. No, not really. No. The other guys are saying he's doing a golf thing it. while you're putting with oh. my grandson. <laughs> yeah. I, well, what he told me good. was that uh, his father won in the 50th yeah. anniversary, and right. he hoped that he could uh, come up pretty good today. He's in the 75th, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I know another guy who's been around this tournament a bit. Uh, Johnny, uh, tell me a little bit about your experience with the tournament. <laughs> Well, I started back way back yesterday. <laughs> when was the first tournament you played, do you recall? Nope, I started way back on the uh, about the sixth flight, worked up to the first flight. My biggest throw was beating Benner one time on the first flight. <laughs> Benner first flight? Yeah. Do you Benner's. remember the first? I played this guy quite a bit too. <laughs> I, know. I could always remember uh, the putt you made on number five. I thought I had that hole. And, <laughs> And you were, I don't know, you knocked in a 30-footer, and, you know, that was just a whole hum putt for you. Just a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> really? No way. What a player. They're not a whole hums. Oh. Back up. Yeah. Don't worry about hitting that bounce.
about that. Frank, can you tell me what happened to that? Well, actually, Tom, uh, I think Kevin's pretty pumped up. He probably hit a wedge or nine iron, and it actually landed in the uh, behind the green and rolled up on the cart path. So he's going to have to chip back. It's not got a whole lot of green to work with. That's what it looked easy to do. Tough shot, but. Yeah. Here you go. Pick it up. Did they come back in, Frank? Right on, yeah, he's right on the edge there. He's got a clear shot. Part of the course I always love, just coming down into number eight green, trapped over there on the left-hand side. And, uh, you know, uh, it's fantastic, some of the new work that's being done around here. Uh, got the new storage barns, work buildings. You can see too, Tom, that, uh, I mean, there's constantly, uh, or there's, there's continuous uh, work and projects going around. They're going on and like these new trees have just been planted here along the uh, 8th 
rough. Well, you know, Frank, it's going to make it a little tougher as years go on for these new golfers with the new plantings that are going on. But it's, it really is going to add to the beauty of the course. And off in the distance, you see the uh, the driving range that was added a couple of years Let's ago. Let's go over and take a look at that driving range. All right. Coming up on the T of the uh, new driving range, Frank. This is neat. The uh, uh, nice little barrier in the background of the nice shrubs. And over here we've got a nice sand trap to practice out of. Get up on this green. That's what I need to do, Tom. Boy, do I need work out of that kind of a trap. Although our traps are a lot nicer than that. There's a great view of uh, this this uh, driving range that's really developed now. I mean, the nice uh, fairway type uh, landing area and all the yard markers all the way down to, what do we got, about 150, 170 yeah. yards out of this? Yeah, you can see uh, people like Kevin O'Connell and Dave Nelson and some of the fellows are regularly using this area. I know I should be over here more often, Frank, that's for sure. John Daly would probably just use a sand wedge on this one, huh? That, that looks like about it. Uh, we got about, what is it out there, 175 uh, distance, so mostly yeah. an iron practice area at this point. Play with you today? No, no. damn it. Well, uh, here's some guys, usually the first guys out in the morning. More of a kind couldn't beat this threesome here. <laughs> How they flying today, guys? Good, good. The uh, number uh, second flight and uh, third flight just uh, hit off uh, uh, number uh, three, Frank. Uh, you know, the interesting part of the three, if we swing over here, something uh, in nature is happening. You want to tell us about it a little bit? Well, you know, this is the most incredible tree on the golf course. It's all wired together to keep it up and probably uh, for many generations uh, this tree has been out here, but this happens to be a beehive too. It looks like uh, honeybees have made their nest in there at, over the last couple of years and it looks like maybe they're beginning their swarm, which is an annual event that takes place uh, every fall. You know, Frank, uh, come by here and see literally thousands of those bees and doesn't seem like quite as many, but I think that tree would be literally uh, full of honey. Let's get back and see if we can get a look at you the want, famous want, old tree. Uh, want me to reach up in there and see if there's any honey in there? <laughs> you may pull out about half a hand. <laughs> hey, Tom, it looks like there's actually a uh, honeycomb right there. I think maybe we better get out of here.
hitting his second shot on number four. And he hit it a little bit long. Well, that both, checked up nice. Yep, both he and Fred Lawyer on the green. You know these White Lake greens, I don't think I've played on any course where the greens hold better in terms of hitting into those greens, Frank. That's right. I've seen Tom Cullen uh, back them up uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 feet on those greens. Frank, Jerry's a very accurate player. This one looks good, Jerry. Er, Frank is coming right in on the pin. Oh, beautiful shot, Jerry. Yeah. Beautiful shot. And he's got quite a challenge here today with Jerry Jervis. It's a hole coming in here on, uh, on uh, number uh, four, Frank, is a lot of people think is one of the prettiest holes on the course. I think uh, uh, former greenskeeper Lance Avery ranked this as his favorite hole. Just a absolutely beautiful hole with the big white pine up there. This is Larry Larson coming in. Is this his third shot, Frank? Uh, yes. yes, he had to punch out yeah. from the side. And he's we'll nicely on the right green. In. Boy, these players are playing very accurate today. How you playing? Good. I three putted two and three. To Did you really? I wondered if you had three putted. No. I wondered if you had three putted number three because I, you know, kind of got you in the binox. So you tied it. Yeah. Okay. Oh no! It's Johnny Miller putting for birdie, trying to tie Dennis Crow. Dennis goes one up after four. Bill Benedict playing field four. This is uh, Kevin O'Connell putting for a birdie on number four. doesn't seem very happy with that shot, but it wasn't too bad. He can get out of trouble there, Frank. There's Kevin over on the left. He's going to have to draw that ball right around. And it's not drawn for him. He's right at the green. Oh boy, I saw that one go in. short of being pin high here on number five. Well, Bill Benedict just hit that ball up right high into those trees and got a heck of a break. It kicked out. Now he's got a little chip shot up to the green. 
Oh, Bill will probably put that one right next to the flag. Frank, he's a real close in player. Yeah, Fred, Fred's been playing well. Eddie. How's your game going, Lee? <laughs> he's knocking the ball out of sight. Beautiful day, huh, Jack? Oh, this is good. Great. Well, these, uh, these two gentlemen are having a great uh, match here, as usual. Uh, coming up on to number seven, which is always a great challenge, about 180 yard par three. It looks like uh, they're right up uh, both within uh, at least par distance, so uh, possibly we could get a birdie over here. That it almost hit the stick. Fred Lloyd knocked one up there that just went right by that stick and stopped maybe 20 feet on uh, top of the top of the green. Very nervous. Went in there low. Fred Loy on number seven. Fred is up by three holes at this point. Boy, we have a breeze picking up here, Frank. You could probably hear it in the microphone. Yes, sir. Fred pulled that one over right into the trap. Okay. Excuse me, on the left-hand side. Okay. A challenging hole, uh, about 175 yards where the uh, tees are placed today. The flag is right in the center of the green, so anybody that's on the green's got a good chance of getting birdie. Oh boy, uh, Larson just uh, just knocked that one right down just off the front of the tee. Certain he's gonna be able to make a good recovery shot, but he's he's got a challenge from there. He's three down right now too, isn't he, against uh, Fred Loy? I think Fred Loy is, uh, is at least uh, two to three up at this point. Uh, Andy Hanishin usually hits just a real fine draw. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the wind does with his shot today. The old 10 o'clock breeze is definitely blowing. I lost that when he's leaning. He wants that one to come in. I think it's over on our side. It's coming right at us here, Frank. Oh, he got a nice kick and he's on the fringe of the green. I don't know if you heard that, Frank, but he caught those limbs right up. I think uh, Andy and Jerry are dead even at this point. As usual, Jerry's coming in. Looks a little short. He may get a kick up there. Yeah, there's Jerry as usual on the green. On the putting surface. Seven. Got a chance, Frank. Thirty foot five from about uh, 
anti Fred Loy in this hole. They kind of got up in the numbers on this one. And there he makes it. Chichi Vartania just walked out on the course to kind of catch up on what's happening around here at White Lake this Hi, morning. Chichi, how you doing? I understand that you spent a little time down the White Lake uh, Festival <laughs> yesterday, uh, Lots taking of time. in some cultural activity. <laughs> Lots of time. Well, Chichi, I understand that you did battle uh, in the uh, in the first flight. Uh, uh, you were in the first flight. First this flight. And went right down into overtime. Uh, you got down to what? Uh, 19th hole. 19th hole, and uh, uh, Dennis Kroll got you one up. That right. must have been quite a match. It was a close match all day. How'd you feel you played? Not too bad. Okay, well, Dennis played good golf, and that's just the way it goes. <laughs> well, he's here today, and he's playing good golf again. Well, Cheech, I tell you, we got a beautiful day out here. Frank and I are having a lot of fun. <laughs> we, got, we got the uh, championship and first flight coming in uh, on number seven here. Kroll's hitting three. Yeah, Dennis Kroll on the tee, hitting first. Dennis Kroll knocked it on. Got himself about a 35 foot putt for birdie. Ball just landed in the sand trap. That's hot. Oh, that might be hot. Ooh, that is hot. O'Connell behind number seven green hitting his second shot. Bill Benedict for his par. <coughs> Putting for his par on seven. His par on seven. And now putting for Ogie. And Dennis Kroll makes par. Uh, another victim of the uh, the tournament, right? Yeah. We're all victims yeah. of the tournament. We're sitting around just watching instead of playing today. Yeah. The losers went and had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Dick, uh, I didn't know that uh, you could get tickets for this event. I thought it was sold out uh, about a week ago. How'd you happen to get in? We got ours two weeks ago. <laughs> we, know our, we know Frank Lundell. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I see you're keeping good company here the, uh, this morning. Who, who, who do you have with you over here? The Hewlanders. The Hewlanders. I think they're off and running. I don't know where they're going. Over to the practice tee. Don probably uh, trying to work out that uh, nine iron problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, do you know what's happening? No. Kevin is down two right now. He lost. He lost the first two. Won the second two, and then lost uh, six to go one down and lost seven to go two down. He just blasted. Kevin. Not an end. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're, we're, on a, we're on a diet. I see you got. I see you got as close as I did to a trophy. Uh, with your trophy yeah, house we hat. Bought, we bought one at the <laughs> trophy house hat. <laughs> you been watching play a while? Yeah, we've yeah. been watching. It's been a great yeah, match. Yeah, uh, Don, a beautiful day out good. here. Uh, I suppose you and Edna will be playing a little bit later on. No, no. Oh, Don playing, not me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Is Kevin playing good or what? No. Good, Are they playing? Or me? 
marine ore on the tee. Is this marine ore? Okay, Frank. Oh, what a nice shot. Great follow through on that swing, Frank. Yeah. And now Betty Gifford, Johnny O'Connell's sister. <laughs> well, Betty looks like she's enjoying this beautiful late summer day. Just a nice, smooth approach to that swing. Oh, what a nice swing. Just, right down the middle. Just as usual down the middle. Uh, is this a uh, usual foursome that we're finding out here uh, today, Frank? Uh, what's going on, ladies? This, I mean, is this a regular Saturday foursome no. for you all? No. no. We dream up every once in a while. Just every once in a while, huh? No. Are you two partners with the matching outfits? No. no, but no, we will no. be eventually. We will be eventually. <laughs> we, we, I think I'm a marine. We said it was uh, we, uh, a green and white day. And now that okay. you ladies are on camera, we want you to watch your language patterns out here uh -oh. on some of those chip shots. Oh, we all of this thing. We thought what maybe it would be a good uh, Here are a couple oh, of local golf pros. A, <laughs> a couple of local golf pros have come by here. Possibly we can get some <laughs> tips on the latest uh, golf equipment and the golf swing. There's right. the pro right, right here. There, yeah. <laughs> Art, you've been the first guy all day to reach number one and two. Uh, the, it seems like you've been improving that swing a great yeah, deal. I have. It's really coming along fine. <laughs> Are you guys going to be over to the party tonight? We're planning yes. on Well, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on film. Uh, this, is this a, a normal Saturday match? Uh, normal uh, Saturday Cam, match. That, yeah. Uh, who's up for the series this summer? Uh, any? A lot of money been changing hands, or uh, yeah, what's what the deal? What we do, we, we play 18 holes, uh -huh. but we really only count the last three. So we, <laughs> you're always on. You're always under well, in that way. We get to 15, then we put up our money and we play 16 and 17, and 18 for the, for the money. <laughs> oh, so, you ever think about just starting on 16? No, because we, we want to practice. practice. <laughs> we want to practice those first 15 holes. <laughs> That's no lie. <laughs> That's great. That's exactly what we do. We'll have a great day, guys. Enjoy. Okay, we'll have fun. Okay. 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 Guys, yeah, celebrity. You guys are the seven handicap. That's celebrity. right. That's right. <laughs> you guys are the first ones today to be over to the top of the hill in one. Nice, yes, nice exactly. shooting. It's an excellent shot. He's All right. leading there. Uh, Bill is ahead and Dennis Kroll is ahead. They're both ahead by about two or three right now. Marianne, how's your golf game going this summer? It's just hunky-gory. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you don't have a better Saturday of the whole summer than That's this one. That's right, right. I'm gonna... How's it feel to go back to work a couple days? <laughs> it, it, it never feels good. I That's don't know sure. that I was off for a couple days oh, this yeah. summer. It's been a busy it's summer. One of those summers, uh, building buildings and new construction. Uh, I think we just have... He's over. He's over. <laughs> That's from the men's team. Great shot. Yeah, hey, that Mary, was great. Mary, Mary, you know what? You know, here I'm I was. Right Did in you the do that over? I was right in the middle of my conversation. Didn't know you were hitting. Apologize <laughs> for that. Nice shot. Right here. Good luck, guys. Okay. You want me to sing or dance, Lou? Yeah, Herm, could you come on over here for a minute? We're out here doing some uh, highlight film clips of changes that have taken place at White Lake Golf Club, and one is this parking lot that's been... <laughs> improved, upgraded or whatever, <laughs> along with uh, a year or two ago when we moved this locker room from the other side over by the Yacht Club back into the adjacent here to number one fairway. Makes it a lot more convenient for the members. Frank, if you want a, a pan over here, you notice a new fence that surrounds the entire course. A, a group of volunteers got out and did a wonderful job. I mean, this is all of that womanized stuff that'll be here for years to come surrounds the entire back nine. Did a wonderful job. Game going today or what? No. Got the big 1230 uh, Fortin, Hoolander, yeah. Seabald, Williams. Who else? Yeah, standard, standard group. We hope to make uh, some money today. Is gonna make it today. Well, we've been out uh, yeah. following the, the championship group. Uh, everybody's playing well. Uh, it looks like uh, coming in, uh, Benedict seems to be up what? Um, Benedict's up two or three up right now, and so three. is Dennis Kroll. There's Coming way, down nine, huh? Tom, there's way too many arms in there for, for a commentator. Well, Herm, possibly you could give us a, a demonstration and literate uh, verbal uh, ex, ex, expounding here for me. <laughs> a, a, a picker of one. Inside the White Lake Golf Club, and 
So this is hard at work here. How's it going on Saturday? Saturday? Not too bad. Got a nice crowd today and have a beautiful day. Yes, a little bit slower than usual. Well, it's awful nice. The clubhouse has really improved in the last uh, year or two. A lot of hard voluntary work to put it together and uh, Looks like you have a real nice clothing display and some yes, customers here taking a look at what we have going on our 75th uh, anniversary of the White Lake Golf Club. We're just going to pan around the clubhouse and take a look and see how things have changed. We walk on in through here into the dining area and into the main clubhouse and locker room area. Many a uh, golf score is added up and some refreshments are served and uh, always beautiful here both in the morning, early morning and in the late evening. Now it's about to drive it. <laughs> I get my coffee. You need to go to the art fair in Whitehall. Yes, did. Sure did. Yeah, here you can see displayed some of the champions of the past. What? Was it worth the main display area? Well, I didn't buy anything. The old gold cup. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Well, you know, I think Richard I hope. Several of our past uh, leaders of the course. Anything small? Three, five, twenty. Um, okay. Four dollars. Yeah, I do. Uh, gals are here doing a wonderful job at the kitchen. You can always see that there's some fresh uh, pastries here available and some nice uh, chicken salad sandwich and always a great smile when you come into the kitchen area. Best food in the, on the White Lake. All right, Tom, get some money out of your pocket and pay for the sandwich. Better go in and take a look at our kitchen area. Huh. Always a good sandwich to be served.
change out here at White Lake Golf Club is the fact that this used to be a cedar grove that surrounded the back of the 14th green here. And uh, five, six years ago, we planted these, I believe they're uh, cherry trees and, and uh, white pine. Well, it's amazing, it Frank. It provides a gorgeous background, a gorgeous setting for this 14th green, and it separates it from the 13th, or rather the 12th tee. And are they growing, I mean, and healthy, each and every one of them? I think that they only lost one out of the whole group, as I remember, and uh, this is getting to be quite a, quite a nice zoned uh, blackout uh, number uh, 12 from those people coming in here on 14. We have Lee Holly coming up here, Frank. Looks like he's had a nice third shot and just a little chip in for his, uh, on this par five. Number 14. Oh, he hit it just a little long, but I think it'll be a player. Is uh, Jack Orr, uh, looks like he's on the front end of the green coming across over uh, from number 16. Uh, we'll have to find out how this match is going, Frank. These two guys are real battlers. Lee Holly, just off the fringe. Number 14, par 5. Oh, just scooted by it. Well, he'll have a little tester coming back. Jack was resting over here, uh, trying to get ready for this next yeah. putt. I was trying to get a good angle on that. Yeah. Excuse me, I was, wasn't even thinking. I was thinking you were off like I was. Oh, that's all right. Uh, It's like about a 30-footer here for Jack. Uh, oh, I just up, left it a little short. Probably watched Lee screw it by there, so he was a little cautious with the putt. Jack finishing out. Nice follow-up putt. Nice putt. How goes the match, fellas? Uh, what did you have on this one? Okay, I'm down one. Lee's down one, and so these guys continue to battle right down to the finish. Uh, good luck on your match, guys. Thank you. Championship group is up on the uh, number 12 uh, green. What a beautiful setting and what a beautiful day. Yeah, Tom, here's one of the changes that's taken place here at Whaley Golf Club. You can see the seawall that was put in a couple of years ago, and uh, the pond, the level of water has risen you know, as, as a result of having a retaining wall there. You know, Frank, I understand some 40 individuals uh, pitched in and did this job without any cost to the club other than the materials. That's correct. That just kind of shows the spirit that's out here, the guys getting together. I think they had a lot of fun doing it. However, I understand it was hard work. And as I understand, you and uh, Johnny, uh, uh, your brother Johnny Lundell, spent a lot of hard work time on that. Well, a, lot of, a lot of people contributed a lot of time and effort. By the way, you know, the, the sand trap setting uh, just above the seawall and the green, and then there's that beautiful fence that's been added again yeah. uh, that we highlighted earlier over by the parking lot. <laughs> you know, Frank, uh, talking about that sand trap, it's totally changed this hole. I mean, it's real touchy where you've got to get over the creek, over that sand trap, and yet that kind of narrows that green up. There are a lot of balls in that pond, Tom Barry, because this hole has become a cycle. Yes, People it don't just come up and knock it on anymore. There's well, a lot of visual uh, intimidation up there. Now, what about the old equipment house? What are we using that for now, Frank? Uh, Tom, I believe it's just used for storage. Okay. Uh, and as you know, the new restrooms that have been built on the other side of the uh, old green barn there have really improved that situation. 
it seems to me that we're just not seeing those birdie putts uh, drop here on this uh, back nine. So I'm sure that's increasing the tension for these fellas that are out here vying for that coveted White Lake Championship. Uh, the gallery Same continues to grow here, Frank. Uh, we have uh, some new fans out here. This is O'Connell, and this is Niver. Mm -hmm. Those stick ports are sorting a little bit usual. Yeah. This is that fence line, Frank, that the guys spent so much hard time in the club money to go. Doing? Pretty good. Nice to see you, ladies. You guys know Tom Barry, don't you? Nice okay. to meet you, ladies. Hi, Tom Barry. Yeah. Yep. I'm the oh, guy that. Yeah. I I'm think a... he used to play with Marty a little bit. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy that used to always hit him over in Johnny's yard, the left uh -oh. that sprays him off, and I talk to him about well, it. Well, you play at night. night. Yes, I yeah, play at night all yeah. the time. Okay, because yeah. really he always first saying, "Well, there are the berries out there." A little bit I play up there over there. Okay. Okay. Sure. Well, this has got to be a thrill to see Kevin out there in the championships and a beautiful day. And I see we got. John is a caddy today. Uh, yeah, he well, he said he got fired. Yep. Oh, <laughs> oh he, he got, got fired. fired. Everybody else is doing it now. Well, <laughs> so you're the. Yeah, he's, he's certainly out there, the number one fan. Well, you know, this is the 75th uh, anniversary of the club, and we're trying to get a look at some of the people that have been really and instrumental in this whole thing. What's your, uh, what's your biggest uh, memory out here, Mrs. O'Connell? Well, I don't know. I but, guess just being out here and playing, really. <laughs> You have got a lot of memories of all the golf in oh, your yes. family out yes. here. Oh, yes. Incredible all stories. She, she couldn't right. stay home if she wanted to. No, no. <laughs> I think Kevin was really pulling pretty hard today because Jay had won it, I think, yep. right. on the 50th, and he really said, I'd love to bring it home on the 75th one for Dad. No kidding. Well, he, yeah. in any case, regardless of the results, he's here on the 75th and in yes. the championship, and you got to be very proud of him. And he's playing good golf. Right? Oh, he really oh, is. He's got an excellent he's swing. Down he's down one. Keep yep. him up. Yep. We're gonna... <laughs> nice to see yeah, you. Nice talking to so you, much. you ladies. Keep him going. Mike, good job. This is Neil Manning and Jack Orr's dream. You know, you talk about vision, setting goals. Uh, you know, uh, many of us here at the White Lake, uh, at the time uh, we get out here, look for that quiet resting place. And you know, indeed, they put together a place where we can all feel comfortable. <laughs> Well, Frank, uh, as usual on the final day, when you get down the holes, the real celebrities, the, the celebrities come out, uh, and uh, more victims. More yeah, victims. more victims. I was a victim. <laughs> well, I did play one round. Well, weren't we all? That's, a, that's as far as I got. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. Hey, well, thank you. Thank you. We're really excited. There you go. Uh, We're really excited. John, did you get a chance to talk to Andy or anybody to see how this match is going? Andy said he is up two and he thinks uh, Fred Loy is up four or five. Okay. okay. On so Fred's 14. just about ready to close out if he does something here. Evidently. Okay. How, how is this one going? Uh, Kevin I believe is one down. Yeah. Oh, Andy just knocked it over the green on 14. Um, just to the right of the back sand trap. 
I saw him staying with the shot, trying to bring it on in. It looks like uh, it's almost he and Jerry are right here together on this shot. How did that one go? Congratulatory me? handshake here. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing? What's the, uh, what's the, uh, where's the match now, Donna? Um, Bill is two up. Bill's two up. And he's in trouble. Yeah, well, I think he just played it out safe. Oh. He's lying uh, uh, three over there? Okay, the four. Oh, he's lying four. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks. Well, here we are, you know, on the uh, 15th. And as you can see, these four gentlemen have hit in four gorgeous potential birdie putts. This is the par three that sometimes uh, can really get you in trouble with the crick in front. And shake, uh, these guys did battle. Good nice job. going, Fred. Larry Good was job. Way, Larry was way off his game. Today. It looks like you were playing deep. well and steady today. I understand you carted a couple birdies. I just won. Oh, just won. Okay, Fred.
Uh, we seem to have a serious problem with uh, uh, a ball has now been located in the bunker. Can you tell who it is? It's the high mounded bunker. They picked it up, and I believe it must be uh, Bill's ball they're looking for. He's in the bunker there. Well, I think he found it. Well, that's not a removable ball, is no, it? No, I think they must have found someone else's, but I think Bill's located his now. Okay, and Bill uh, Benedict is in the bunker, is that? Uh... In that grass bunker there, yeah. Okay. I, don't, I did not see where Kevin fell. Well, this will, this will certainly be an interesting shot. We'll see what Bill's going to try to do with it. Andy, how far out was that final putt? We were over on the other hole. Uh, Probably 45, 50 feet. <laughs> oh, it's it 16. Was a, it, it, was, it was a seesaw battle all the way. Three times. Yeah, nice job, know. Jerry. Great match. Thank you. Good yeah, job, you Andy. Well. Well. It's been a lot of fun following that match, I'll Both tell you that. Played, uh, you know. Well, uh, as you can see, the guy's coming up uh, number 17 here. Uh, just Frank, a fantastic shot by Kevin O'Connell. I mean, uh, what are we talking about uh, in yardage here? Uh, I think we're talking about a, roughly about a 220 shot. All right, back tee is probably about onto the green. Five all carry. Yeah, it looks like kind of a right-left wind. Uh, although the flag looks a little steady now. Kevin made a great shot. Looks like Bill Benedict uh, uh, just hit it a little short into the trap but he's a great sand player so the match i'm sure will continue right down to the final hole and of course uh you probably already noted that dennis kroll won his match on uh, 16. he yeah. closed johnny miller out yeah dennis played steady all day without a doubt you know he was there in the tough holes and, and that great chip that he made on number 15 uh right into the cup i think that uh, that was that was the key to that match well, here we are in the 75th, and uh, Kevin O'Connell is trying to repeat uh, what his father did on, uh, on the 50th uh, anniversary of White Lake Golf Club, and you can see who's here to watch it all happen. It's a pretty exciting day for us here. We're here on number 17. The match is dead even. Bill Benedict just made an excellent shot out of the sand. Very makeable for his birdie. And of course, uh, Kevin uh, knocking it all the way on in this par four and is currently putting for Eagle. Birdie putt out of the sand to Bill. Always there, always competitive. Birdie, birdie. Here we go, down to 18. 
A great match, dead even, Frank. Right down the middle of the great finishing shot uh, for Kevin O'Connell. Another beauty. Oh, yeah, no. oh. beauty. These beauty. fellows are playing great golf. This is probably one of the top matches in the history of the club here on the 75th. Well, here we go, Frank, off to the 18th. This is it, Tom. What an exciting match. Well, we've got a nice gallery here today, and I think, you know, the weather's about 80 degrees and a nice clear breeze blowing across White Lake, and uh, this has been a lot of fun working with you, Frank. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Another great year. I always look forward to doing this. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you haven't been able to be uh, running here. And uh, they always hand us the camera. Well, you know, uh, Andy uh, Hanishin uh, took me apart real quick early on. It was no question that Andy was here this year to, you know, have a great match and uh, finish his champion the second flight. And Benny Kroll, uh, you can see from the beginning, uh, his shots were dropping. Uh, he made some nice chip ins as well as he was just steady down the middle all day long. I think indicative of the kind of golf that we're seeing here, Frank, if you'll pull over, you'll see that we have a couple of drives, I'm gonna say probably around the 230 uh, yard range, uh, right down the middle. And uh, these guys are just playing excellent golf. As you can see, coming off number 17th with a pair of birdies, uh, we're right down to this finishing hole and it's just been a great championship. Nice looking shot, right on it. Right on. Oh, what a shot. Beauty, Bill. shot out of bounds. Out of bounds, well, that's a, it's a real shame. I mean, it's been a great match. And he'll be dropping again. Uh, true gentlemen, uh, I know Kevin's very disappointed, but a great match. Uh, Bill Benedict again, repeating as a White Lake champion. I think he's been a White Lake champion before, has he not, Frank? I believe he has. I know uh, Kevin's very, very disappointed. They were dead even coming into 18. Bill shot knocked that up. And then I'm in. certain a uh, very disappointing finish for Kevin, but uh, being a young golfer, you know he'll be back to uh, win this championship right in the future. Bill, uh, you've been in the final four times, and now you're carrying home the championship. It's got to feel, feel really good. Feels good. Uh, that was an absolutely great sand shot on number 17. I know the pressure was on, and they reached down and getting a hug from the daughter here. Uh, you got to be very proud of uh, champion dad. And then uh, this uh, this final, uh, uh, Bill, what'd you use coming in here on 18? I had a nine iron. Nine iron? Yep. Nice close to the pin, and uh, of course that sealed the match. Yep. Congratulations, Bill. Thank it's been you. a great tournament. Thank you. And you're a great champion. Thank you. I know you've done a lot for golf in the Muskegon area, and uh, the whole golf world around the Muskegon is very proud of what you've accomplished. Thank you. Thank and the Danny Kroll, of course, uh, was just steady throughout the tournament. Uh, a great uh, long chip in there on number 15. I think that gave you the confidence to, to really take the match. And uh, Danny, you've been steady all, all through the tournament and it's got to feel very good. Uh, Feels real good. I had three tremendous rounds with very competitive golfers. and. Uh, 
Johnny scared me. Well, I know, I know you can see the confidence level that you had here on the final day. I think you just felt it was your year, and uh, just to battle back, you had a couple of tough shots to come out of, and, and you yep. battled your way back. Uh, I think it was a great par, as I remember, on uh, number 13. You got yourself in a little trouble. Uh, you got a break a from trouble, the trees. Got a break uh, from the tree, had it out of bounds for a minute, but it and, came back. And then to seal it with that putt for that par, it was a, just a great finish for you. So congratulations. Thank you, Tom. Kroll. Thank you. Chipped up in the green. Played first set. Andy, flight in champ. Front <laughs> Second flight champion. Uh, Jerry Jervis uh, made a great match up, didn't he? He's a heck of a competitor, that Jerry Jervis. Well, Andy, uh, have you uh, is, have you carried home the flag here in any of the championships in the past? It's, I'm trying to recall. I know it's you've been, been a number of years, Tom. I know you've been in the championships a few times, but do you have uh, one championship uh, out here? Uh, had to feel very good on this day playing against a great competitor, Jerry Jervis. I agree. Thank you. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'm so hilarious. Did you? Uh, I didn't see you hit out of the sand with uh, uh, 17. Hank, it's been fun working with you. Uh, we've had uh, four great champions crowned. Uh, uh, we had Bill Benedict as our champion. Uh, we've had uh, Dennis Kroll, first flight. Andy Hanish in second flight. And uh, is it Doug? Or, uh, Fred Loy, third flight, champions. Really? Oh, we don't know about, we haven't heard about Jack Orr and Dr. Holly. Jack Orr and Dr. Holly, I know they were tight. We've got to get in and find them and get the final wrap Let's up. Let's go get a shot of the I'm board. looking out along uh, White Lake here. You can see the sailboaters are out. It's uh, one of the most beautiful days I think we've ever had here. We're gonna get try to get Jack Orr over here to give us our final wrap up. We're getting a final wrap up, and uh, how did you guys finally finish out on that? Uh, I finally ended up two up at the end of 17. Jack Orr, we started out with them and we're finishing with them. Fourth flight champion, and Jack, it's got to be a thrill for you today. Oh, it sure is. I know I, you guys had a happy. competitive uh, match all the way through, and I can't think, you know, of any summer where we've had such a beautiful summer. The flowers out around the course, the condition of the course. Uh, just every day has been a great day for golf and to finish off with about an 80 degree day with a nice okay, soft wind blowing and the Argument. great champions we've had. Bill Benedict winning the championship. Uh, he was in it five times and finally won it and I know it meant a lot to Bill and oh, a lot to the club. Well. Of course, Kevin O'Connell, our young new champion coming up, he'll be back to have his name on that trophy uh, a lot of years in the future. Great. Thanks, Jack. Yep. Thank you for all your help, Tom. Sure appreciate it. And you, Frank Blundell. <laughs> I thought it was Jack. Um,